I've reached level 45, killed thousands of enemies, scoured plenty of dungeons, completed loads of side quests, and I put 25 hours into Diablo 4, and I'm only nearing the end of Act 2. Diablo 4 is an absolutely massive game that takes this famous action RPG series to a new place, with it being an open world and having online features similar to Destiny, and I simply cannot put it down. The character building is easy to understand, but so deep, the story is so much more cinematic, and the loot and carnage are so much fun. If you don't know, Diablo is one of the powerhouses of the action RPG genre. And if you're unfamiliar with what them games entail, well, you run around collecting loot, leveling up and building a character to decimate thousands of enemies. And as a series, they have some of the most addictive loops and Diablo 4 is no exception. I'd like to start with my favorite thing about Diablo 4 and that's just how readable the game is. It's so easy to understand and never gets in your way. All the quests are perfectly laid out so you'll never get lost wandering aimlessly around the map trying to figure out where to go. But where this readability shines is the character building. I picked a rogue because I've always loved hunters slash rogues in fantasy games. And after reaching level 5 or 10, I could already see how many options there are to build my character the way I want. From the start, I had multiple basic attacks I could spec into. Some were melee and others were ranged. Now of course I went with a bow, and very quickly I could already see the plethora of builds I could do. One build was focused on inflicting status effects and another was all about making enemies vulnerable, but where my eyes lit up was where I could very clearly see the synergy between all of these builds. I focused on a crit chance and damage build with my main bread and butter skills, but then I saw there was a stealth ability and I could augment it by having the attack while in stealth always be a crit. If I take something like Borderlands or even Destiny, it feels like builds don't come together until the end. And at times, especially in Destiny, I felt like I needed a YouTube video on how to make a certain build. But it's so easy to grasp in Diablo 4 that I can already see how even within a role class there are multiple builds that not only change up my skill rotations, but also how I play the character full stop. Just off the top of my head I could have a complete poison build, I could have a stealth melee build, or I could even have a build that focuses on freezing enemies. And the best thing about all of this is that you can respec at any time, it costs a small bit of gold, but you can literally do it at any point in the game, so you're never really punished for experimenting with builds, which is something every single action RPG should do. And of course, I've only played the rogue, there are 5 classes in the game, and if each class has multiple potential builds just like the rogue, there will be so much replayability after the fact. The biggest change is the move to the open world games as a service style of game. And I'm mostly enjoying it, but there is one major drawback. Firstly, the game straddles the line between feeling single player, but also being online. I'm playing in the pre-order window so there will be more people on the server, but outside of the main towns I rarely saw people which I enjoyed when I was doing just side quests and normal quests, but when I ran into the world events and had to do them by myself it was a bit disappointing. Now of course when the game fully released, which I have played a couple of hours since it's been fully released, there will be more people so this shouldn't be too much of an issue later down the line. Now I haven't had any issues connecting to the game which is great, but now that the game is fully released and I played like 3 hours before making this video, I'm having some connection issues that I didn't have before. So I'm recording this on Monday the 6th of June which is when the game comes out and yesterday Sunday I was having a lot of connection issues with like rubber banding and stuff and it really hindered the experience. So honestly I'm kind of worried about what these issues will look like this weekend when everybody is on. Obviously when these games launch you are expecting some issues and so far I've been able to connect no problem but I am wary about when the servers get more popular. As for the game being open world, I love this change and it's for one reason. When I play action RPGs, short play sessions never really feel rewarding. In Borderlands, doing one quest or a side quest or two kind of felt like a waste of time, and I always felt like I needed to do multiple in one play session so I felt rewarded. But Diablo 4 fixes this issue and it's because of the open world. Doing a single dungeon or a side quest or two are so snappy and rewarding that even short 30 minute play sessions felt worth it. Now, I did typically play this game for multiple hours straight because it is that addictive, but I did play a few shorter sessions and they still felt rewarding. The open world activities are pretty standard, but the core gameplay loop is so engaging that random fetch quests, copy pasted dungeons, and samey open world objectives haven't worn down on me yet. After 50 hours it might, but as of right now I'm going out of my way to do them all because the loot is great, but also the progression through building a character is addictive. I will say though that dungeons, while fun, repeat layouts and bosses very often. Like I fought the same end dungeon boss like maybe 5 times already, and right now it's not too big an issue but we'll have to wait and see later down the line. I never got lost exploring in an action RPG the way I do in Diablo 4. 
I typically play it because of the grind, and while I'm playing Diablo 4 because of that grind as well, I'm finding myself exploring the world just because there'll be a dungeon around the corner or a side quest that will give me some loot or XP to my next level. And I know I said that some of these dungeons feel samey, but they're a lot bigger than you think and some of them are absolutely massive. And again, you just get so much loot at the end so they always feel worth it, regardless of how copy pasty they are. And it helps that this game looks fecking amazing. Diablo 2 had a very unique dark style that makes it stand out from the crowd. Diablo 3 went with a more cartoony look, and while I typically prefer more vibrant visuals, it just doesn't feel like Diablo. But Diablo 4 looks like they took the art style of Diablo 2 and made it modern with some gorgeous lighting and particle effects and some stupidly crisp texture. The only time an action RPG needs to look good is when you have loads of particle effects going and it just engages your eyes. But for some reason, Diablo 4 looks absolutely amazing, even while standing still. I mean, just look at this detail. It's insane. And you know what the issue is with making this Diablo 4 video? Is that I have to stop playing Diablo 4 to make it. Because I just can't wait to go back and play it. I would love to know what you think of Diablo 4 in the comments. I know it's only out today. Did you spend 100 euro or 100 dollars on it? Or did you just buy it today for 70 or 80 dollars? I will have a review discussion up when I beat it in the future. Maybe next week or the week after. So keep an eye out for that. I really appreciate you watching. Join the Discord down below. I'll see you all on the next video. Goodbye.